Let me ask you. If your boss asks you to steal, right? You work at the post office and he says, you need to do these things. You need to open envelopes and look for cash. Are you going to do it? Why not? Well, it's just, it's, that's wrong. Okay. Who says it's wrong? The government says it's fine. The government is the post office. So the post office is the government, right? And they say, go do this. Would you do it? Dispensationalist? Non-Christian nationalist? Hey everybody, welcome to Come to Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we're going to be talking about a tiny little subject that doesn't really mean much to most people, Christian nationalism. There's been a statement released by one side and another side, G3 and Josh Bice and those guys have been arguing and battling on Twitter. If you might have seen this, you might not. You might have no idea what I'm talking about, but we're going to be looking at the statement released by the Christian nationalists and what it looks like. I've not read it. Read it with me. Coming up next. All right, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Uh, welcome, new people. Hope spring has entered your life. It's May third. Happy May. April is always kind of a funny month in my mind. I don't know why. It never really feels like a month because it's Easter and it's like it was just Christmas and it's like cold, but it's not cold. Depending on where you live, uh, it might still be cold. Hopefully not. It's May now, but happy May, happy spring. Spring, of course, starts back in March, but doesn't seem like it for most people. Anyway, thank you. And thank you for spending a little bit of your day with me. This isn't going to be too long, hopefully. We're going to be looking at the Christian nationalism statement. Now, G3, um, Josh Bice and all those guys, they have a conference. They've uh, done some other things. Used to be in the SBC. Now they're not, at least uh, Bice's church in Georgia. There's been a lot of back and forth the last few weeks. Michael O'Fallon, William Wolf. Actually, I am, I am having William Wolf on the show this coming Saturday. So look out for that. We're going to be talking about Christian nationalism and how he defines it and what it looks like. Uh, it's going to be a very good conversation. Not the author of The Case for Christian Nationalism by Canon Press. Uh, that's Stephen Wolf. This is William Wolf, younger guy, uh, but just as passionate about the topic. It's a good conversation. Will be a good conversation. So, Christian nationalism. We can look and understand that we are a nation, right? And if you're looking at binaries, a lot of people want to say, well, I'm this, I'm that, you know, and we all like to, oh, I'm a Calvinist. I'm a five point Calvinist. I'm not a Calvinist. I'm a non-Calvinist. I'm a young earth creationist. I'm a I'm millennial. I'm post-millennial, right? I'm pre-millennial dispensationalist. <clears throat> I'm a young earth, no old earth creationist. I'm a uh, theonomist. I'm a patriarchist. No, I'm a compatibilist. I'm a soft compatibilist. I'm a, uh, right? Sometimes it gets a little, little much, right? We used to just say we were Christian followers of the way, and now here we are. And some of that ha is necessary. Some of it's not. Some of it's just we like to define and put labels and put everything in a box and just hope it contains in the box. But everybody's different. Um, not to say that God is in a box, per se, although I understand when people say that, and I've said it, because uh, he's not, because he's the beginning and the end. Like Everything is already present with the Lord. Everything. All at once. That's it, right? Um, this is why, like, open theism, for example, doesn't work at all. Because, well, we won't get into that. So, everything's omniscient. God, this is how God, it's like all on a table, right? As it were. Or, you know, there's a million billion screens, zillion screens that God sees every moment. At least that's how I understand omniscience. Could be wrong, I guess. But anyway, Christian nationalism. You're a Christian nationalist, you're not a Christian nationalist. Well, what's the opposite of nationalist, but a globalist? What's the opposite of Christian, but pagan or unbeliever or secularist? So are you, audience member, are you a Christian nationalist? You might think, oh, you can't make a nation Christian. I heard this a lot of times, especially going to um, a very MacArthur-y type church several years ago uh, in California. Great church. You know, it's had some issues like every other church. Uh, it's had a few different pastors since we left. Um, but... Yeah, I kind of bought into that, but it's also a premillennial dispensationalist. And so the view is it will get worse. There's no way that people are going to come to Christ, which is in one sense, I understand. But the problem is you don't know when that's going to happen. You don't know the Antichrist. You're reading the tea leaves and the and the newspaper ads and, or headlines. And you're thinking, oh, it's right now. It's right now. It's right now. I mean, we see this all the time with the Left Behind series and 
the rapture and all that. You know, you're sitting on the edge of the seat and you're just like, well, well, it's going to happen. I'm not going to have any kids. I'm not going to look for my grandkids. I'm not going to build a legacy. I'm not trying to build, build, build. And, and, well, what if Christ, if that's all true, which is possible, it's true. I'm not, you know, not saying you're a heretic or something like that. If you believe it, it's fine. I don't believe it anymore. I used to. Um, but say it is true. Christ could still wait for a thousand years, 2000 years, 5,000 years. Why do we think that the rapture is right around the corner? There's no indication. And many dispensationalists, there's, there's, it's a sudden event, according to them with the rapture, many of them. But then they say, well, Israel this and the temple that. And it's like, yeah, but most dispensationalists say there are no signs. It's a signless event. So which is it? <laughs> right. But I think a lot of people just read the headlines and think, yeah, oh, Israel became a nation. Oh, this, 1948. Oh, you know, this, oh, 1967. Oh, the five, six day war. Uh, point is, a lot of people aren't Christian nationalists because of things like that, because they see it globally, but then they kind of have a distinct distinction between the church and Israel and all this other stuff. Okay. But if you're not a Christian nationalist, are you a, are you a secular nationalist or a white nationalist or a black nationalist or an Asian nationalist? Are you a, a non-Christian nationalist or are you a Christian period nationalist? Okay. Uh, or are you a Christian globalist, right? Like some of these guys, Russell Moore, David French, guys like that. Uh, they certainly are not Christian nationalists. They don't seem to care much for the nation at all. But we look and we see that God has made the nations, right? We see Acts 17 very, very clearly. Acts 17, God has made the nations. 24, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth. This is a good... I love this passage, probably one of my most influential passages uh, in my life, especially in my early Christian life. Being Lord of heaven and earth does not live in temples made by hands, nor has he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life, breath, and everything. Amen. Now, this ruffles some feathers, right? If you read it just plainly, uh, this is why this is why the, the theological distinctions, no one completely fits in every single thing. You can't just shove so-and-so in a box and say, he's this. Yes, we should have beliefs. Yes, we should have distinctions, but you can't be slavishly holding to those distinctions because there's always exceptions. And there's always verses that seem to run counter to your own soteriology, eschatology, ecclesiology, on and on, baptism, right? You know, I've got plenty of Presbyterians. Oh yeah, baptize the babies. See, here, here, and here. It's like, okay, well, I say baptize the believers by immersion. See, here, here, and here, right? Like, uh, how should we do church? How should we do this? You know, plurality of elders, one elder. How should, how are people really saved? Where does faith come from? Blah, 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 right? And so there's so many verses that you have this package and people only, this group only talks about these verses and this group only talks about these verses. This group talks about these verses and so on. He is not served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all mankind life, breath, and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, having determined their allotted periods and boundaries of their dwelling place. So this is this is where we're we're what we're one race, right? There's a race, right? Human. Now sometimes people use that distinction of ethnicity, race, but that's all materialistic, godless paganism. That's all Darwin that we branched off instead of one. Uh, one tree as it were the tree of life or you know humanity and we do this people in in naturalism see this over here this over here this 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 one this this over here and they all branch off differently right so there's the mongoloid race and the this race and the the whatever all the names are i don't even know they're all have like these scientific old names that's why some races are better than others quote unquote and some have evolved more than others blah blah, blah. that's total nonsense it's nonsense. I don't believe it. Don't You shouldn't believe it either. Uh, if you're a Christian, you are sinning against the Lord and his word because it's evident. It's abundantly clear from here, Romans 5, Exodus 20, Genesis, Genesis 1 through 3. I mean, there's so, so many passages. Uh, Genesis 5, Matthew, first couple chapters of Matthew and Luke. I mean, <clears throat> we look how the lineage people begat people, right? And they split off. And yes, there's languages. And Babel is a huge event. I'm going through the Christian Net, Case for Christian Nationalism right now by Stephen Wolf. Um, uh, more on that. I'll give my opinions at some point. But nations are, are God. God made nations. Okay. The question is, when did he make them and why? Right. Was it a Babel? Would it be something that was 
would have happened had we not sinned and fallen and God cursed the ground? That remains to be seen. Honestly, there's some people that say one way or the other. Having determined there are a lot of periods and boundaries of their dwelling place. Here's this. Uh Uh-oh. Some people get ruffled with this. Deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with it. Uh, Let's put you back. There we go. That they should seek God. Ah, nobody seeks after God. Have you heard that? I know. It's Bible. It's Bible. Deal with it. And perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is not far from each one of us. Now, this is Paul preaching to unbelievers. He's not preaching to Christians. He's not preaching to Jewish people. He's preaching to the Greeks and the Areopagus in Athens. The most godless. This is Harvard, right? This is a TED Talk. This is not church, right? This is not a synagogue. This is not the temple. Yet he is not far from each one of us. For in him, now he quotes a couple pro- uh, prophets using kind of syncretistically, sort of, uh, but baptizes these things and makes them biblical, for lack of a better word. More on that. We won't look at that too much. In him, we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think of the divine as like gold or silver or stone, an image formed in the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God has overlooked, but he commands everyone, all people everywhere, to repent. To repent. You see that? To repent. What does that mean? I mean, it's plain, right? You might have some theological system or some sort of understanding. You might be in some denomination or group that says, well, well, be very careful when you start taking plain texts of scripture like this. There are less plain texts of scripture. I get it, 100%. There are texts of scripture that seem, quote unquote, to contradict one another. Or this quote, you know, from the old versus the new. Context matters. And I just told you the context. He's in the Areopagus in Athens, literally Harvard, Yale, Princeton. This is Cambridge. This is the Oxford debate. If you've seen those very formal things are standing and giving a defense. That's what this is. These are godless secular people. They, they are godless in the sense of Yahweh and there's no Yahweh, right? They have, he goes right before that. He says, you're worshiping the unknown God and so on. So nations, they should seek God and he commands everyone everywhere to repent. This is who should repent. This is who can come to Christ. Do they all? No. Because they all repent? No. Other places say why? Because they love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. So, by the way, I did a poll and you said you wanted more of these shows, which is why I'm doing one on Wednesday. So we're going to be trying to do Wednesday and Friday Contra Thoughts. I used to do that. Just got a little busy. So Wednesday thir- Wednesday and Friday Contra Thoughts, shows like this, just me generally. And Saturday, we'll have conversations still contra talk, contra talk. That's my talk show. And we're going to be doing that. So look forward to that. I did get demonetized, by the way, um, or ineligible. Yeah, I demonetized, I guess. <clears throat> but I can reapply. I think I figured it out, but I'm not going to know until the end of the month, May 25th. So if you want to support me, by the way, uh, buy me a cup of coffee.com slash Richard T. Henry. Buy me a cup of coffee.com slash Richard T. Henry. I would deeply appreciate that. Uh, I have raised almost a hundred bucks uh, recently and it's been good. I'm going to get some lights back here. I want to do some other things. Um, these are all real. What is this? Oh, that book. Um, those are all real. I'm in my attic, so I don't have a lot of space. I actually can't even fully stand up in here. It's very, very tight. So yeah, I'm not looking at moving spaces, but I do need a few things. I need like a better setup because my laptop's down here and, that's why I kind of look down here sometimes and the cords and it'd be cool to have another camera. I mean, I technically have one, but I don't really have the right setup. I need to get with somebody. So if you know anything about tech, I know Jason uh, over at Dearwell Christian and some others use the little switcher things and stuff like that. I might have to upgrade. So if you want to help me out again, drop me a coffee, five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever. Chip in as politicians like to say. So on to this, what do we got? <clears throat> Christian nationalism statement. I have not read this. There was a little bit of a debate on the... Um, oh, there we go. Okay. Um, I've not read this yet. There was a, de- a, a... I guess they came out with... G3 came out with using a font 
which is similar to the Gospel Coalition, some of their stuff, I think. Or is it another? I don't know. It's it kind of looks nice. Whatever. I'm not going to look at it because I can't. I don't have a lot of time today. But they changed the font. It's kind of funny. The statement on Christian nationalism and the gospel. Right. So it's all good. Nobody asked me about the font. Personally, I change it. Uh, that's my background, graphic design, but it is what it is. I do know a couple people, so maybe I'll I'll put in my... No, I'm just kidding. Get to the thing. Get to the thing. This is a draft version. Please send recommendations for changes below or through the DM to this on Twitter. Okay. Definition. Christian nationalism is a set of governing principles rooted in scriptures teaching on Christ's rule as supreme Lord and King of all creation who has ordained the civil magistrates, delegated authorities to be under him over the people in order to be, to order their ordained jurisdiction by punishing evil, promoting good for the glory and common good of the nation. Isaiah, John, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Romans, 1 Peter, Deuteronomy, Matthew. Introduction. While Christian nationalism is primarily concerned with the righteous rule of the civil magistrate Christian nationalism is not just for magistrates as it is submitting to Christ's Lordship is not just for magistrates, but for all people after the Lord Jesus declared his sovereign authority, he gives a great commission and commands his followers empowered by his everlasting presence to make disciples of all nations, baptize them, teaching them to obey all that I command. Our Lord did not exclude all civil authorities devoted allegiance to him. We recognize existence of, of the def other definitions of Christian nationalism, we certainly do not endorse every iteration of Christian nationalism and explicitly repudiate such forms as will be evident in our affirmations and denials. You may sign this document and delineate it if you affirm civil authorities legislating both tables of the law or only the second table of the article. We are honored to receive signatures. Now, if you affirm the statement as it stands... We do not accept anonymous signatures. In July, we will host an editorial summit to discuss any necessary amendments. Follow the next day by the conference. Authors, James, Dusty, contributing editors, William Wolf, there he is, Joel Webin, Jeff Wright, Corey Anderson, Ben Woodring. Okay. Affirmations and denials. We affirm that the Bible is God's word, breathed out by him, as the only sufficient, certain, inerrant, infallible, necessary, and final authority for saving knowledge, faith, what we must believe, and obedience, how we must live. All truth claims and ethical standards must be tested by God's word. With scripture alone, we affirm that the Bible is precious, per, uh, pers perspicuous, pers yeah, in all the essential matters. We deny that true beliefs, good character, or good conduct can be dictated by any authority other than God's revelation. Scripture to Timothy, Psalm, Isaiah, Hebrews, Peter, etc., etc. All right, so far, so far, so good. Okay. Um, so there's going to be affirmations and denial. Like I said, I haven't read this yet. I've been paying attention to it. Um, I'm in community, fellowship, whatever you want to call it online with a handful of people that are associated with this. Jeff Wright's been on the show a couple of times. Uh, he just did, we just did something with Contra Talk, Contra Thoughts, uh, talking about the Megan Basham, SBC, Saddleback, female pastor thing. So he's real good. He's a pastor down in Tennessee. He's about my age. Uh, a lot of these guys are younger. And I know a lot of the guys have been not as well received by the other Big Eva adjacent guys or older guys as that's, often the case, right? People don't like somebody younger coming up and, you know, taking their place. Uh, we're all very prideful and selfish a lot of times, intentionally or unintentionally. So whatever it is, but so far, so good. Let's get back to this. The Orthodox Christian faith. We affirm the Orthodox Christian faith as defined by historic creeds, Apostles' Creed, Nicene Creed, Athanasian Creed which the Christian church throughout church history has universally affirmed. We deny that orthodoxy is defined by any particular confessions. Okay. So it's, it's a general, but they deny particular. Okay. Number three, standard of justice. We affirm 
Uh, the selecting is annoying. We affirm that God's word is authoritative on everything to which it speaks. And we affirm that God's word speaks abundantly regarding the nature and importance of civil government and justice. We affirm that God's moral law is enduring and binding on all people, including civil magistrates and nations throughout all time that is summarily comprehended in the Ten Commandments. We further affirm that every political thought must be taken captive. We deny that there is any objective standard by which to discern justice from the injustice outside, from injustice outside of God's revelation written on the heart most perfectly, perfectly revealed in scripture. We deny that governing officials may rule autonomously from the rule of Christ. And we deny that Christians may embrace any political ideology or position not rooted in scripture. Okay. Very good. So... Affirmations, denials, great, very good. They're saying justice. Now, one thing to note, and a lot of people, and I heard this, and this is my own reasoning a decade ago. Again, I was very, I was in a very healthy church. I was saved in this church, um, but it was a very MacArthur Chep church and very non denominational, very independent, very do your own thing, kind of pick and choose who you're going to listen to type thing. And, you know, we all do that to a degree, but. Not that that's a bad thing, but it's not necessarily a good thing. But when you're in the bubble, it seems like a great thing. But a lot of it's pride and arrogance. I was very prideful. I used to think, just a little snippet, I used to think that people were, who were in denominations were probably not saved. Right? That's how arrogant I was over a decade ago. Uh, very foolish. Now, thankfully, I didn't make <laughs> videos saying that. Uh, although I just did. But it would have been more embarrassing then because I was in that you know non-denominational Bible church, community church bubble. And again, there's a lot of reasons for that. I think there's 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 good in that. There's also good in being part of a denomination of a larger group, uh, a bigger tent, as it were, because you have more resources, more money, more influence, uh, more fellowship. And you can also be a little more humbled and realize not everybody's exactly like you. Right. And that's the biggest thing is not everybody believes exactly like me. I don't believe exactly like you or you or, you know, any other person who's watching this, um, whoever those you are. Right. So Ten Commandments, though, are all reaffirmed, by the way, in the New Testament. I don't believe that the Lord's Day or uh, the Sabbath is the Lord's Day. Uh, Sabbath is still Saturday. It didn't change. We worship on Sunday. We see that from Acts. I'm preaching through Acts. Acts is such a good book. It's so foundational. It's also kind of like that umbrella that goes over everything of the New Testament. Uh, it's very neglected, I think, most of the time. We just kind of jump in and we don't really know, but we see Paul writing and visiting and we see the missionary journeys and Peter and preaching and the establishment of the, of the visible church there and all these other stuff. Okay. That's weird. Okay. Uh, all right. Definition of a nation. We affirm that a nation is not merely an idea, an abstract principle or an ideology, but tangibly defined by a particular people in a particular place. We affirm a particular people are necessarily bound together by both a shared culture and history and may be comprised of multiple ethnicities, sharing common interests, virtues, language, worship. We affirm in regards to place that a nation is definitively set by both its borders and times physically defined by God. There it is, Acts 17, 26. Thusly, we affirm the nation should rightly maintain autonomous government, sovereign control of their people in place with the necessary rights and duties, prioritize safety, prosperity, well-being, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to read all this. I mean, it's good, but I don't want to make this video crazy long. We deny that a nation should cede its sovereignty to international bodies that may subvert the will of the nation, national interests, for global order. We deny any efforts to establish a one world government system before the return of Christ as such efforts are modern day replacement of the Tower of Babel. There we go. We further deny that sovereign nations must be composed of mono-ethnic. There we go. Here it is right here. We further deny composed of mono-ethnic populations to be united under God. Therefore, as Christian nationalists, we utterly repudiate sinful ethnic partiality in all its forms. Gentlemen, Two thumbs way up. Very good. Because so many people, white Christian nationalists, you're a Christian, you're just, this is for white people. Right? The leftists say that all the time. And a lot of Christians kind of gobble it up because they're scared. I'm not sure why, uh, really. You know, it's like you don't want a Christian ruler. I've had conversations with people in person like that. Even people at church. You're like, I'm sorry, wait, what? You don't want, you wouldn't want a, if you could choose between Biden, who's a vegetable and doesn't believe anything but his own interests, or you know, a godly guy who you might not agree with 
you know, ecclesiology or, or soteriology, but like he loves the Lord. He loves his family. He's been married one time. Biden's been married a couple of times. If you didn't know that, I think a lot of people don't know that. Um, I mean, he's, that's the least of his problems. Right. But you're like, oh, I don't know. And I've had people say that. And it's like, wait, well, what, why? Cause it's like, they think like Christians shouldn't be involved. Like politics is dirty. And it's like, politics is dirty because of sin, but we make restaurants dirty because of sin. We make lawn mowing dirty because of sin. We make sex dirty because of sin, right? Like there's all this stuff that God has made that we live in and yet sin corrupts it because of the unbelieving heart, because of the rebellious heart. So uh, I don't know. Let's get back to this. Number five, the nation of Christ's lordship and kingdom. We affirm that in addition to possessing the titles of Savior, Messiah, and other many others, Jesus, the Son of God, who is truly God, is also the King of all earthly kings, the Lord of all earthly lords. We sing that, right? We sing that all the time. Do we not sing that? Do we not say that at Christmas? Do we not say? I mean, of course we do. And yet many Christians are going to be like, I don't know. Like what, what, the rubber meets the road? Now you're all passive and and, and weird? Like it makes no sense. Lawmaker for the earthly, for all earthly lawmakers. He is the possessor of all authority in heaven and earth. We affirm That as God, Jesus Christ is preeminent over all creation, sovereignly rules over all things, visible and invisible. I mean, that's Colossians, right? Colossians 1. Where is it? Down here. Yeah. Christ rule, spirit and the word through earthly authority, which he divinely has ordained to execute his will on earth to orient mankind towards himself. We affirm that Christ alone, through the blood of his cross, grants repentance and forgiveness of sins to reconcile sinners to his father. I would say the father personally, but we deny any theology which could seek to segregate sacred aspects of life where God's word is authoritative and supposedly secular aspects of life where the Christian must operate by a standard other than God's word. We deny any theology which claims that bringing God's word into civil sphere is unwise, unfruitful, sinful, or anything other than fitting and required. We deny that Jesus's kingship and lordship are merely heavenly and that his word is only authoritative over confessing Christians. That's the key. And that's where a lot of dispensationalists, which a lot of people are. uh, And I think that's why we're in this mess. I don't want to lay the feet on, you know, John MacArthur or somebody like that. Who's, who's the most prominent dispensationalist probably, uh, or one of them, but you have decades of that type of belief just like if you believe the rapture is happening next week, you're not going to have kids. You're not going to plant trees outside. You're not going to cultivate the ground. You're not going to add on to your house. You're not going to think about when you're getting married at 25 or whatever. You're not going to think about your grandkids. You're like, well, I don't even have kids yet. Who knows? Jesus might come back. I was like, well, yeah, he might come back. But that's been the case for almost 2,000 years, right? He resurrected and ascended around AD 30. <laughs> like, it's been almost, we're still not there, almost 2,000 years. Only 2023. Uh, I don't know. The identity of civil officials and the source of their authority. We affirm that civil officials are God's deacons of justice. That's what it says. Romans 13. There it is right there. Therefore, they must obey his commands and rule under his authority. We affirm that all human authorities, including civil officials, possesses authority only as it has been delegated to them by God. And accordingly, we are accountable to him for we, for how they wield their delegated authority in accordance with God's prescriptions for civil government as revealed in his word. We deny, we deny the authority of civil officials and documents to contradict what God has said in his word or govern beyond the bounds of God's word as established for them. And that's true, right? And would you not do that? Like if you're, if you're working, I mean, we see this, Right. We've seen people like, well, I'm not going to issue a marriage license or I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to marry you or I'm not going to fill in the blank. Right. I'm not going to support killing babies. I'm not going to steal. Right. Christian, non-Christian, nationalist, Christian, dispensationalist, Christian. Let me ask you, if your boss asks you to steal, right, you work at the post office and he says you need to do these things. You need to open envelopes and look for cash. Are you going to do it? Why not? Well, it's just that's wrong. OK, who says it's wrong? The government says it's fine. The government is the post office. The post office is the government, right? And they say, go do this. Would you do it? Dispensationalist? Non-Christian nationalist? No, you wouldn't, right? 
you wouldn't do that. And so why are you, why are you having a problem with these other things? And you think, well, you know, they're not submitted to Christ. And it's like, well, sure, they're not submitted to Christ, but that's not the point. God calls everyone everywhere to repent, like we just saw in Acts. We deny, how much longer is this? Okay, this is a lot longer than I thought it was. All right, so I'm going to read up to 10. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm going to read up to 10, and then you can check out the rest, because this video is going long, and I actually have to get going. Uh, but I wanted to produce, throw out a video today. The duty of civil authorities. We affirm that God has armed civil magistrates with the sword of justice to promote citizens' welfare without partiality, writing and enforcing just laws, as God defines just. As God defines just. I would say justice there. but Which are a terror to those who do evil, as God defines evil, defining and approving those who do good, as God defines good. We affirm the civil authorities must ensure that the church shall enjoy the full, full, free, and unquestioned liberty of discharging every part of their sacred functions without violence or danger. <clears throat> Lockdowns. Oh, wear a mask. Don't sing. Showing favoritism to or bias against any Christian denomination for the historic beliefs of, of its teaching. This includes, but not limited to, the teachings and beliefs concerning the immut immutability of biological sex, the union of marriage as existing solely between one man and one woman, I would add for life, uh, and other historic Christian teachings on sexual morality. We affirm that the government has the right to intervene to prevent or stop any ceremonial religious, quote unquote, practices that violate the natural law and welfare of mankind, including but not limited to children sac chi child sacrifice, polygamy, child sexual exploitation acts of religious Mes, mes, masochism, Ma oh, like sadomasochism, masochism, and so forth. We deny that civil authorities are tasked with being primarily caretakers of citizens or educators of children, as these duties belong primarily to the families and church. We deny that civil government should endeavor to take these responsibilities. We deny that to do so to benefit society rather than such charity displaces family by creating culture of dependence upon the nanny state it's true and education often debauches children with godless philosophies and perverse instruction we deny that in scripture god and god ever approves of tolerance toward depravity like child sacrifice mutilation drag queen story hour we would that's too specific i mean it's good to be specific but i think that's too specific but anyway we would follow our king and he does no such thing. The purpose of civil government, three more. We affirm that God's purpose of civil government is to orient citizens toward the true and eternal through the establishment of justice for his glory, his image bearers, whether or not they possess saving faith. We affirm that unjust laws often debauch the people and that just laws often have evangelistic impact. We deny that the purpose of civil government is to establish a secular, neutral, godless order. It's true. There is no neutral new there is no neutrality, right? The myth, the myth of neutrality, right? And that's that same thing that goes along with it is people don't think Jesus is better. And it's like is Jesus's ways, God's ways better? Yes. Right? What does God say is to Israel who's sacrificing to Molech? Didn't even enter my mind. God's not doing it. He's not commanding, it. he's not decreeing it whatever fancy word you want to use, they're doing it in their rebellion. Israel, God's elect people, chosen nation. Drag queen story hours, right? Drag queen family-friendly strip clubs or whatever. <laughs> it's like, and it's like, oh, here's a family-friendly, you know, tree, tree grinder, stump grinder. Just put your foot right in that little stump grinder. It's family-friendly. Your foot will love it. It'll just feel a little tickly and then you'll bleed out. Like, you can't put family friendly in front of sin and then, you know, you're good to go. Like these people are psycho. They're literally freaking psycho. We further deny that natural law is a standard, is a standard different from, different or apart from God's moral and universal law summarily comprehended in the Ten Commandments. Okay. Uh, we affirm that God has established spheres of authority such as the home, the church, the state, we affirm that God has given unique responsibilities and instructions to the authorities within each sphere. Authorities in each sphere are subject to the rule of Christ. Each retaining 
sovereignly over its own sphere while being checked and balanced by others. Parents are the authority in the home. Wield the rod for the purposes of instruction, training, discipline, preaching, the law. Uh, church wields the keys of the kingdom. There we go. I thought that was Peter. He's the first pope. Nope. Let's try, guys. For the binding and loosening of the gospel profess professions of God's word and preaching the law and gospel of conversion, sanctification, and discipline. The state wields the sword. God's servant maintains justice as civil order by punishing evildoers, avenging the innocent, condemning the good, ensuring that wholesome societal conditions are righteously upheld so that all men may lead a quiet, peaceable life. Yep, that's in, I forget where that is. We affirm that Jesus Christ has appointed over his church, both government and discipline. No law or government should interfere and hinder due exercise. Therefore, among the voluntary members of any denomination of Christians, according to their own profession and belief, we deny that human authority in any sphere possesses absolute or unchecked authority, even within their sphere as Christ delegates all human authority. Therefore, all are accountable to Christ and his moral law. We deny that civil authorities may assume to themselves the administration of the word and sacraments, the power of the keys of the kingdom of heaven, but must be uniquely protective of the free exercise of Christian faith according to the dictates of conscience under the orthodox Christian faith. Whew. Last one, last one, last one. There's still several more, but I'm only going to do 10 uh, because I have to go. I got stuff to do. I didn't know this was so long, but that's okay. Uh, I told you, I, this is the first time I looked at it. On nationalism, the prop policy priorities. We affirm that nations... Why does it keep doing that? Stop it. We affirm the nations possess an inviolable right to establish justice and safeguard the peace and prosperity of their own citizens in the face of unjust international pressures. We affirm that the specific short-term priorities of Christian nationalism in the context of the United States are repentance and faith which lead to the abolition of abortion to defeat the LGBTQ agendas. You forgot the plus and the I and the two A's and the P and the I and the other. No, just kidding. Agendas, various insanities and coercion. I would change insanities. I mean, I, I agree with that word, but it's like it's too vague because so many people say everything's insane. But anyway, uh, placing parents in control of education, caring for widows and orphans and de-weaponizing the federal and state bureaucracies, which target Christians for censorship, persecution, securing our borders, recapturing the nation, national sovereignty from the godless global elites, present grave threat to civilization like the United States, World Health Organization, World Economic Forum. See, notice these are all world. United Nations, World Health Organization, World Economic Forum. These are all globalist, right? Anti-nationalist, right? You're either a nationalist or a globalist, or you're just not thinking about it, right? There's three options. Exercising far more restraint in American international military intervention and adventurism in overseas democracy building, quote unquote. We affirm that different forms of government can achieve just laws. We do not seek to coerce nations into one particular form of government. Okay, there you go. We deny that seeking to maintain an and assert national sovereignty against wicked global elites, entities, excuse me, has anything to do with dislike for any particular race or nation. I would say ethnicity there, not race, <clears throat> just to be super, super specific, because there's only one race, human, we already read that, X-17. We deny that sin of racism, I mean, it really should be ethnocentrism, right? I know we say racism, and that's just the word we have has any place in the church of Jesus Christ or a nation that seeks to honor him on the contrary, a Christian nation would be impartial in judgment. Okay, so there's big picture agenda on the vocation of calling of the Christian officials and legislators, the Great Commission, the uses of the law, on the distinction between the law and gospel, civil disobedience, methodology, just war, imago Dei and equal protection, on neutrality and separation of church and state. So, I'm not going to do it with part two, most likely, because y'all don't care about part twos on stuff. I don't know why. That's okay. Uh, you can go back. I did a few part twos on stuff, and it's like literally a third as many views or half as many views. That's fine. I'm not doing this just for the views. I'm doing this for information, for education, for fellowship, for teaching, um, and for me, because it's fun. And I like talking to y'all. And so I want to hear your thoughts. Have you heard about this? Uh, please tell me in the comments if you know about this, if you've seen any of this on Twitter. Um, the little back and forths with G3 and some of those other guys, Sovereign Nations, that's the guy who hangs out with James Lindsay, uh, the atheist guy who's smart, but he's he's a fool in Christ's eyes, right? Because he's not repentant. Uh, and so 
I don't know. I mean, James Lindsay's preaching at conferences with pastors. He did that recently. And it's like, I don't wait, what? Like, why would you <laughs> like, you're totally anti somebody who's, you know, a Matthew Vines, who's supposedly a Christian, but he's also homosexual. Like, Oh, uh, that's bad. And it's like, yet you have this unbeliever who's clearly rejecting Christ. And yet he's going to preach at your pastor's conference. And this is like Virgil Walker and, and some of these other guys, you know, we, we, we need to be friendly. I'm not, saying these people, castigating them and saying they're the worst human beings on the planet. But at the same time, we need to also be faithful, right? And we can have fellowship with other people and people can disagree and everybody has an agenda for something. But at the end of the day, we need to be faithful to Christ, right? So go figure, right? As Christians of Christ, that's what it means. IAN is of something, Canadian, Russian, right? Americanian, no. Go check this out. Statement on Christian nationalism uh, and the gospel. Maybe I'll, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'm going to read this whole thing, but I don't know if I'll do another video on it. Maybe I will. I'm going to look at the G3 one because they released one as well. Uh, or supposedly, I don't know. I didn't really follow Twitter too much. I'm really not on Twitter. Uh, I have several friends who are on Twitter all the time or colleagues or acquaintances, whatever you want to call them. Several of these people I've never met face to face. I've only connected online. So, Anyway, y'all, tell me how you took this. If you've read this, if you heard this, are you a Christian nationalist? Are you not? Uh, do you think it's a divisive term? Drop a comment. Let me know. Have you read this? Tell me. If not, will you? And uh, what are your objections? What are your affirmations? So I hope this finds you well. I really do. I got to get going. Y'all have a blessed day. Be against the world, for the world. I hope this was my goal. This That is my goal. I hope that was achieved today. All right. God bless. Take care.